The New York Jets have decided to bench Zach Wilson for Mike White for this upcoming game. Let's take a look at how it all went down and what teammates are saying about the situation. J-E-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets! So, so the big thing I want to make sure I address on this one, um, just want to make sure you guys all listen to this very carefully, please. Uh, Zach's career here is not over. I know that's going to be the narrative. I know that what, that's what everybody wants to wants to shout out, and that's not even close to the case. The intent, the full intent, is to make sure Zach gets uh, gets back on the football field at some point this year. Um, when that is, I'll make that decision. I'm going to take it day to day. Uh, the biggest thing with Zach, and the same things that we've talked about, is the young man needs a reset. Um, uh, his decision making's been fine. His practice habits, all that stuff, have been fine. But there's some basic, fundamental things that have gotten really out of whack for him, and this is just an opportunity for him to sit back, uh, focus on those things, find a way to get uh, uh, reconnect to all the different things that we uh, we fell in love with during the draft process, and it's something that I feel like he's going to be able to do. Um, I think to ask him to do all those things while preparing for a game is unfair, um, but uh, but at the same time, it's uh, it's something just talking with Zach that I think we're all excited to attack. And this is, you know, like I said, it's is it a small step back? Absolutely for him. But do I think it's going to be a great leap forward when it uh, when he does get a chance to reset himself? Absolutely. And um, so this is not a uh, this is not putting a, a nail in his coffin. This is not that. It's not even close to that. Um, you know, it's first of all, it stinks. You know, because I know what kind of competitor he is, and I know what kind of man he is, and I and I full heartedly mean that. Um, you know, I got to do a better job. I got to do a better job for him. I got to do a better job for the offense. Um, you know, I, I, I truly believe it, it. It starts with me. It ends with me. You know, so um, I got to figure out a way to uh, to, to reset him, uh, get him back to playing fundamentally sound football, getting uh, and more importantly, just consistent football because he's done some really good things, but um, I haven't done it a good enough job to to get the consistency out of him. Uh, so that starts and ends with me. What was your initial reaction when you found out? Uh, it's tough, man, and it's never fun. But you know, the first thing kind of went through my mind is I got to get to work. I got to, you know, I got to get better, and and uh, I'm gonna approach that every single day. Just keep working to get better. Were you surprised? You know what? I wouldn't say necessarily surprised because I haven't been doing my job, and you know, of course, I would like to not agree with the decision and everything. But it comes down to I got to play. Welcome to Jets Talk. My name's Ryan. I'll be your pilot. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. If you've been here before, welcome back. I love having you here. Boys and girls, I want to talk a little bit about the whole Zach Wilson benching. Uh, it happened just before Thanksgiving. Did a little bit of a live stream. Didn't get a chance to follow up with everything going on because of Thanksgiving. Uh, clearly, some good, some bad. Like that the Patriots lost. Don't like that the Bills won on Thanksgiving. Hope you guys had a good Thanksgiving overall. But let's go into these comments. I want to talk about uh, Zach Wilson. Then I want to go into the comments about his uh, from his teammates. And then I also want to talk about some comments from former teammates because I think there might be a little bit more nuance with someone who doesn't necessarily have to fall in line with the company line anymore. Uh, so let's jump right into it. Uh, my first thoughts on Zach Wilson getting benched. I think this was probably the right move. Robert Sala was in a position where he had to hold Zach accountable. And I think when you look at the the team coming up, you have the, the Chicago Bears coming in. Not a great defense. You know, quarterback may or may not start in Justin Fields. And I think if you're sitting back reflecting on this, you're looking at Zach Wilson, you're saying, all right, if, if Zach wins this game and he does look good, are we going to give him a lot of credit because he did this against a bad defense? He did this without the other team starting quarterback. What kind of goes on? What's the what's the best outcome in this game for Zach? And then you think about the worst outcome for Zach. And if he starts throwing incompletions, I guess the home crowd that's really fired up right now. The boo birds start coming out nice and early. So I think there's a few positives for benching Zach this week and then starting Mike White. I think the Jets are still the favorite, and I think Vegas actually changed the line, so the Jets are actually more favored now than they were previously. So that goes to tell you what Vegas thinks about Zach, I guess. Um, but I think there's a lot, of, a lot of positives here. I think we could still win this game with Mike White, and I think the players probably feel that same way. And then LaFleur talking about, you know, needing to help Zach Wilson. I think it's nice seeing that the offensive coordinator is taking responsibility for an offensive player not performing well. And it's not necessarily on LaFleur. There's, there's situations and play calls that I don't agree with, for sure. But by and large, 
it's really been a quarterback issue, not so much a, a play caller issue. But I like that LaFleur is coming out and saying this. I think it's the, the right way to go about it. And I think Zach, you know, is starting to eat a little bit of humble pie. And, and as we go into these comments here, uh, first one up, let's talk about Mike White. Mike White comes out and says, Zach Wilson has been extremely supportive of, of him and said that Zach is his friend even more than he is his teammate. He feels like Zach is in his corner. I've never heard that Zach Wilson is a bad teammate or anything along those lines. By all, you know, all optics, it, it appears like he's a halfway decent dude. Um, and for Mike White to come out and say this, yes, I do think it's a company line and I think it's some, the right thing to be said. I know Zach wants to get the starting job back. It's it's part of the fiery nature of it. But I'm glad that Mike White is here on the roster and he's taking uh, everything in stride and, and there's no division, it appears, uh, with this decision. Uh, DJ Reed on the defensive side says, Zach Wilson did speak to the team today, declined to get into specifics, but called it a heartfelt message, said it was something that had to happen. Wilson told the team his goal is to win his job back. I think that's a really important uh, way to word that to his job. His, his goal is to win his job back. He needs to earn his job. Prior to this, he really didn't earn his job. You had the corpse of Joe Flacco as the backup quarterback last year, this year. So it's, it's not like he was competing against anyone for, for the starting reps. He was the number two overall pick. He was the incumbent, not the incumbent, but he was going to be the guy that that's what it was. Now he has to fight back from this to, to get some reps. And I think this is something that other play, other players I don't want to say sympathize with, but other players understand because they have to fight for their roles. So it's nice to see the quote unquote leader or head of the team or should be the leader of the team, I guess, and the quarterback having to fight for his job as well. He doesn't get a pass because he's the number two overall pick. So I, I think this was an important thing. And for Robert Sala to pull the plug and then have these comments come out, I think it, it is really nice to see. Uh, Elijah Moore says, uh, when asked about the quarterback change, tells, uh, tells Samini they support both quarterbacks, says... They have Wilson's back despite the demotion, says the team will support him the way it supported him and Mims following their situations when they ask for trade requests. So it is nice to kind of feel like Elijah Moore's probably feeling more in with the team than maybe he was initially after making the trade um, demand and whatnot. So I think there is still, you know, time to obviously recoup the relationship with Zach and, and not have it totally blown out of the water. Um, but this was a good comment by Moore and he's probably pretty stoked cause he's probably going to get a few more looks, uh, than recently. Uh, Corey Davis comes out. Corey Davis says, uh, he's glad that Zach addressed the team after what happened on Sunday. It shows who he is, his character. He's a leader and he's going to need him moving forward. Or we're going to need him moving forward. And I completely agree with this. I do think Zach has the highest upside of quarterback. And I do think Mike White has probably a much higher floor. So I think you're going to get a more consistent, steady performance out of Mike White. But I think when you have to go against teams like the Bills, like the Chiefs, I think it's going to be very hard to win without the firepower of the potential of Zach's arm and, and some of his escape ability and playmaking ability. But it needed to happen. He needed to address the team. And I think it does speak to his character. I don't really think Zach is a bad dude. I think he was probably frustrated. He said something that, you know, he was just trying to get out of the, <laughs> get out of the situation. He did, didn't read the room correctly and wound up saying something that came off really, really dumb and uh, not self-aware, uh, which is where all the backlash kind of came from here. Uh, I think the most interesting comments came from CJ Mosley. Uh, obviously captain on the defensive side. CJ said he didn't have any hard feelings for what Zach said after the game and that he appreciated speaking, uh, appreciated him speaking to the team today. He said that Zach Wilson put everything on him and said he has to be better. CJ Mosley also says, uh, we had a hitch in our offense, so we're looking for a difference maker to be more consistent. If things aren't going well, you have to look in a, uh, look for a different option. That's not a knock on Zach, but we all have a job to do. This is important. This is kind of what we've been saying. Like you gotta, you gotta look at the other 52 guys. They have a job to do. They have careers. They have contracts coming up that they need to try and address and try to get more money from. And a quarterback that can't get the job done, that's going to be an issue for guys that want to get paid. And uh, to get the job done overall as a team, you need someone more consistent, which I think a lot of us can look at Mike White and you can say, I think he is going to be 
much more consistent than what we were getting out of Zach Wilson, purely because of the nature of his play style. I think we saw it against the, the Bengals last year, and I think that level of play and that style of play is very conducive for a team that has a ton of weapons. Get the ball into your playmaker's hands. Let's, uh, let's make some things happen here. And I think the defense playing the way they have been playing, if you get some consistency on offense, some consistent first downs, now you're getting a little more rest. Now you're playing even faster than you would have been playing had we been getting some uh, three and outs and whatnot. Now, the one comment I did want to touch on because I thought it was really interesting. I had a few people send this to me, and this is from Lamar Jackson, the Bears cornerback, former Jets cornerback. Uh, just because it's he has some insight on Zach from being in the locker room last year, and also, you know, he doesn't have to hold back. He's not on the Jets anymore. It's not like he's held to this some kind of, uh, you know, team standard that you have to pay attention to. So this is what Lamar Jackson said. He says, I like Zach Wilson, Jackson said, but I can see comments about how he carries himself, a sense of arrogance. I could see how it could rub people the wrong way. When he's good, he's good. When he's bad, he's bad. When you're not the most likable guy, of course things are bad. Uh, everybody's going to have a problem with you. So he's saying he's not the most likable guy. And I think when you're the number two overall pick, you're big dog on campus and, you know, at college and then you come into the leagues, you're kind of a kind of a big shot. We used to talk about that when we were in high school and you'd have the eighth graders coming up from middle school, coming into the high school and now they're freshmen. So now it's like, all right, we got to put you back in your place. <laughs> that's, that's kind of the vibe I, I sort of got from, you know, hotshot quarterback coming into the league as a rookie. Um, Lamar Jackson goes on to say, I can definitely tell you the locker room, they're behind Mike White, Jackson said. He's one of those guys that's very likable. I know everybody's going to try to buy in and help him succeed just because of the type of guy he is. I know he has good respect over there. The backup quarterback is taking his lumps all the time. He's constantly behind the starting quarterback. He's playing against the starting defense. There's going to be a level of respect that I think guys are going to have for the backup quarterback, particularly Mike White, and it seems like his personality is conducive for that. Uh, guys are going to help Mike White make it happen. They kind of know the situation. There ain't no telling how they really feel about Zach. A guy steps in that's been there. I'm sure they're going to play hard for him. So this was an interesting comment. I'm glad that Lamar Jackson kind of said that because I, I think it sends a little bit more, um, maybe a little more nuance to the situation. And I do think that you know, I, I think it makes a lot of sense. I think there's just a lot of confidence coming from a number two overall pick. I think there's a lot of um, maturity or humbleness that could be coming from a backup quarterback, someone like Mike White, who's been in the league a few years, and he's fighting for his career. This It's very easy to go back to Zach being the number two overall pick. It's very hard to, to maintain your position as one of the top 32 quarterbacks in the world. Uh, and for Mike White to do that. And I think it's going to be fun to to watch how these next few weeks progress because I think it gives us a read on the offense overall. And if the offense really starts clicking on all cylinders without Zach Wilson, I think it's going to be a really big detriment. If you start seeing more of the same uh, and things kind of stall out, then I think it's a little bit easier to go back to Zach. My thought process, purely from like a, a guessing game kind of thing, I think we are going to win against the Bears this week. I think Mike White leads us to that win. I think it's possible that our defense holds the Vikings in check and we do win against the Vikings with Mike White. And then I think there's probably um, maybe some concern with the Bills game. It's going to be in Buffalo. I do think there's probably a little bit more shaky nature to these, last, these next two starts in the Vikings and the Bills. And then if there's a really bad game against the Bills like Mike White had last year, granted he didn't have any weapons, I think it's a lot easier to pull the plug. Now you go back to Zach Wilson potentially for the final four games being Detroit, Jacksonville, Seattle, and Miami. And then maybe that's the spark that you kind of needed while also capturing some wins with Mike White and getting Zach's head right. We're, we're, we're going to see. We're going to see how this all plays out. It's fascinating to see. It's an interesting situation. I'm feeling pretty comfortable with Mike White. I'm excited to see how he handles the offense, how the offense responds. Guys, let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below. How do you feel about the quarterback change? Do you like the comments that the team has made? Let me know everything in the comments section down below. And as always, go Jets.